What's up, everybody? Welcome to episode 84 of the K1 Agenda. Today is December 10th, 2021. And as you can see, I'm in a crap work type of mood. Um, you can never get you can't never get too motivated without having a, a craft work shirt on. This is one of my uh, like I said, one of my all-time favorite groups. And um, like I said, it, it motivates me and um it's nice to be in the studio. I'm I'm spending a lot more time in this studio. Um First off, I just want to tell you that um, I'm I'm working on the second, the second track of two, the second track of a, a collab with a Chicago artist. He's a legend in Chicago, um, in Chicago house music, and um, I'm honored to be uh, uh, collaborating on, uh, with him on this track. Um, I'm not going to announce it just yet, but uh, I, I will eventually. I just have to finish up the second track, which um, I'm, is loading up today. Um, to add my parts to it. Also, I'm also um, working part time on the um, the new fragments. It's called Fragments EP, which um, is an optic nerve project, but also um, just an optic nerve project uh, of experimentation. Um, just using the, uh, the sense and everything, and just um, you know working on something without a deadline. You know, uh, like I've said, stated before in the past, I don't have to really work on any new music because I have plenty that's already done, and um, this is just a chance of just doing some experimentations to uh, work on changing on, uh, just um, doing something a little bit different. So this EP will be called Fragments, and it's a reason for the name of Fragments. Um, I'll clue you in on that more as I'm uh, working on it. Um, maybe by, I would say, two weeks, maybe just before Christmas, um, I, um, I'll let you, I'll preview some of the music on, on um, the K1 Agenda, let you hear what I'm working on in the studio. And if anyone's been uh, keeping up with my social media page on Instagram and Facebook, which is Keep Tucker K1, go check it out, man. I've been uh, posting um, um, information for Christmas gifts on everything that's in the, um, in the gear, in the gear page for Puzzle Boss gear and merchandise. You can get everything. Um, like I said before, I, I just re the last release was the last thing I put up was the Optic Nerve um, Uncharted LP shirt, which has the front of the LP on the front and the back of the LP on the back of the shirt. Pick that up. But know this, people: thirty to thirty-five percent off for the next twenty days. Uh, well, I won't say twenty days up up leading to Christmas. So go check out those links. I put up phone cases, uh, pillows, uh, hoodies, tank tops, ladies' tees, uh, sweatshirts, long sleeve shirts, everything. Go pick it up. It's a great gift for all those people who um, who like techno and some of your friends. Um, it's not just uh, my puzzle box or some of the artwork that I did for AUX88. It's also some some shirts that uh, talk about that mention Detroit and just electro. Pick up something here, a great gift for um, somebody in your family for Christmas. Pick it up. Also, remember, coming in 2022, um, the Optic Nerve live show, which will be exclusively booked by Daniel from Connect Bookings. Um, I'm already working on uh, what the conceptually, like what what the gear that I'll be wearing and, and, and what I'll be doing now, which is totally different from what I did in the past. I'm finally getting to do what Optic Nerve is. It's about visual and listening. So get ready for that. And once again, my booking agent is Daniel at Connect Bookings. 
www.thebrotherhoodpodcast.com. Puzzle Box Records News. I want to put you guys up on all the latest new Puzzle Box releases. Well, I won't say Puzzle Box releases, but more or less all the releases for my um, various aliases that I go by. First up, the latest and greatest that just was released about a week and a half ago is the reimagining of Face Your Fate with Jack Master from Glasgow, Scotland. It's a collaboration with Jack Master, Black Tony, and myself, which features the great vocals of Black Tony. Pick it up out right now, and that EP is called Face Your Fate. Pick that up. Also, just released on the Under the Radar label, it's called Bass in Space, featuring, once again, the vocals of Black Tony and um, me, it's a brand new EP on a um, Spanish label. Pick it up. Just released. And once again, that's called Bass in Space. Pick up that A-side track. It's really fast electro for all the jitters and all the people that like the vintage electro music. Um, also pick up the co collaboration with me and Slam from Soma Records. The track is called Machine Conflict. It's from Volume 1 of the Louder Than Chaos um, EP featuring... Slam and Optic Nerve. And once again, the track is called Machine Conflict. I was very glad to do that one. That was a nice song. I'm going to be doing some more collaborations. I, uh, I worked on the second track with um, Slam also, um, which is unreleased. Also, pick up the K1 remix of Binary System of my, my boys, my friends from uh, Microthal from Vienna, Austria. And that's on the Trust label. George is all uh, labeled Trust. Pick that up. It's a, a electro remix of the track Binary System. Once again, that's Microthal. Pick that up. Also, just re-released and repressed is the Robotics EP on Mechatronica Records featuring DJ Digital, Anthony Rother, and myself, K1. Released again on the Mechatronica label. Re-released. Very, 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 very... Um, Unique EP with three different artists um, called the Robotics EP. Pick that up. Also, remember uh, my um, endeavor with um, Soma Records. They put out the first uh, Optic Nerve EP of many to come on Soma. It's called Far Away, featuring the great artwork of Kyle Irvine, who will be doing all my graphics for all my visuals that's coming up for shows. Thank you, Kyle Irvine. Thank you, Soma Records. Also, pick up the Uncharted LP on Jeff Mills' label, Axis, on the Escape Velocity series. This is a full-length Optic Nerve LP featuring, once again, the beautiful artwork of Kyle Irving. Pick it up. That was released in March. Pick it up. It's the full-length LP. Now, I want to speak on all the Puzzle Box Records stock, which... um. I'm going to put the distribution here. You can get in touch with distribution, um, my Puzzle Box distribution, for um, getting all these records wholesale. Um, in stock, PBX32, Stargazing, featuring K1 and Doppler Effect. And once again, that's on limited vinyl, limited color vinyl. Uh, it's gold, um, gold vinyl. So pick that up. Also, pick up the original, the original PBX3 Face Your Fate featuring Black Tony on vocals and me doing all the um, the music. Pick that up. PBX 8.5 also is another collaboration with Black Tony and myself. This is called the Electropathics EP, and that's PBX 8.4. Also, don't forget to pick up one of my earliest um, artworks and uh, Electro's um, releases, the fourth release on Puzzle Box labels in the 90s. It's called the Automaton EP, and that is PBX4. Pick it up now. Uh, check out the artwork. Um, also, pick up PBX29, uh, my, uh, my fray back into the electro world uh, after leaving um, AUX88. This is my brand of electro um, that I tried to change up and make a little bit more minimal. 
Here's PBX 29, and that's the Modular World EP featuring the track Modular World and Schematics. Also, pick up PBX 30, which is the Monochromatic Images. This is the third EP for Alien FM. PBX 30, once again, a collaboration. Alien FM is myself and Black Tony. It always has been. PBX 31, Mad Scientist EP. AUX88 presents Mad Scientist. This is um, me and Tommy's four way into just using so much gear to create this electronic album. It was really fun doing this album because we toured as a Mad Scientist and uh, we had a whole, um, the visuals. This is the first time that I had um, did all the visuals and the whole. Um, the whole concept for the whole album was created by me and um, this was a lot of fun um, Tom put a lot of work into his releases uh, his music as well as mine that was on the album uh, pick this up voice modulation PBX 31 last but not least the latest and greatest EP on Puzzle Box Records is PBX 33 Strand meets Optic Nerve pick it up now that Strand meets Optic Nerve. And on that note, I also want to brag on the group Strand. Pick up their new EP, Resilience. Um, awesome EP. Check out this artwork. It's out now. Pick it up. Go to the Strand um, social media, Facebook, and get information on uh, how you can get that record. This is Strand. Love these guys. They make great music. All right. For all those distributors, remember, here's the email. Hit up distribution at PuzzleBoxRecords.com for all wholesale orders. And for 2022, we will be putting out a lot more releases um, for the year. Everybody knows uh, with the pressing plants right now, it's really slow. They're really behind, so it takes a long time to get records pressed. But I'm, I'm um, on a mission to re-release a lot. Not the whole catalog of Puzzle Box, but almost the whole catalog. I'm going to re-release a lot of stuff that I put out and uh, other music that I put out on other labels as well as some stuff that I did originally on direct beat. So thank you. Everybody, listen, 35% off at least two to three times a month on all this product. Like I said, t-shirts, mugs, coffee mugs, cups, pillows, tapestry, hoodies, baseball shirts, short sleeve shirts, um, phone cases, man, you can get so much and it has all the designs for all the logos that I've done over all these years and I have more coming and keep in mind, you can get this shipped pretty much from your own country. So you're going to save on shipping. Pick the stuff up now. Go get it. K1 out. Question of the week. Um, once again, if you have any questions for me, uh, you can always hit up PuzzleBox at PuzzleBoxRecords.com for any questions you may have, whether you think I would be offended, positive, negative, whatever. Um, send your emails there and I'll be happy to answer all, um, all the questions. And this week's question is, uh, why do you have so many aliases? Uh, Optic Nerve, Alien FM, K1, and recently Fusion and CKFT. Well, I mean, I, that's always been my thing. Uh, the, the reason why you have aliases is, to, is to, to spawn off different types of music. You know, my Optic Nerve is, uh, is a mixture to me, how I best describe Optic Nerve. Optic Nerve is um, a mixture of Transmat and uh, Model 500, which is that, and Carl Craig, which is that that original Detroit techno sound with mixtures from the great Marty Bonds, Strand, um, you know, um, just um, the early Detroit techno music. Um, Claude Young, that's what I want to say. I, uh, I model a lot of that stuff. I, I love Claude Young's string work and stuff. So Optic Nerve is a lot like that. Alien FM. Alien FM is just an extension of... AUX88, but it gets a little bit more heady and spacey and more conceptual. 
Uh, and that features me and Black Tony. My K1 project is strictly my electro. My electro that I did that was like AUX88, but it's just my own solo work. Fusion. The Fusion project is uh, Max Durant from Italy and me. It's a fusion of Detroit techno and Italy. It's a fusion of Rome, Detroit to Rome. So it's us putting our, um, our, our, our styles together. And that's how we came up with the, the group Fusion. CKFT is Carl Finlow and Keith Tucker. That's where the CKFT comes from. Um, uh, we will be um, collaborating again. We have some stuff that we are in the, in the midst of uh, discussing right now. But that's really great because I really respect uh, a lot of his music and a lot of his stuff, man. He, he works really quick, man. He makes great music. Carl Finlow makes a extraordinary electro music, and uh, I'm glad that we, uh, you know, we collaborated and we created this group, CKFT. But I hope that answers your question, man. It's just a chance to, uh, you know, to grow, man, to 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 make your music better. And that's why I've always had different aliases um, that I can put out, which I did different styles of music, which which kept me growing and doing stuff on all types of labels and traveling and and and. Just putting out tons of music. So my catalog is amazing. I have a big, large, large catalog. So thank you for that question. And please believe, if you have any more uh, questions, please email PuzzleBox at PuzzleBoxRecords.com. Thank you. Old pick and video. This week, um, I want to show you some uh, vintage pics uh, of Christmas, um, me as a kid and my brother as a kid. Check these pictures out. These are some pictures of us when we were, you know, uh, I mean, at Christmas time, man. And, you know, that was a great time. And I'm still like that to this day, man. When Christmas comes up, you know, it's just, it's just, it's just a beautiful time, man. You're positive and then, you know, you're getting those gifts. And then I think now as I've gotten older, it's just more exciting to buy gifts for people for my family and, you know, getting stuff together and then having everybody sit down and hang out. Now, since I have nephews and stuff and, um, you know, uh, more family and stuff, man, it's just a great feeling. I always love Christmas. And these are some of my, um, like, my fondest and um, fondest thoughts, man, and remembrances of uh, when I was growing up with my uh, my brother and stuff. We had a lot of fun. And my mother and them always made us have a beautiful Christmas. Um, also, I want to... Um, I want to show a vintage pic from the Portrait of Electronic Band documentary. Um, once again, that featured um, the story of how AUX88 came to be and all our, um, you know, um, struggle and uh, what went on when we first created the group from when we started and then just artists from all over the world speaking on it. Um, this particular feature, I want to show some outtakes. This is the raw footage, not cleaned up and not, nothing, not colorized, not, you know, anything. This is just raw footage and outtakes from um, the interview with DJ Digital. DJ Digital uh, replaced me the very first time that I quit AUX88 in 1995. Um, and um, I remember it very well. I don't know if we got too much into it. I didn't really look too much at the footage of this, but I'm really the reason that I remember, uh, I'll let Lamont explain when we're in here, but I just wanna say, uh, we met him at the same studio that we were recording at, Doug Patterson's. Uh, he was a friend of our childhood friend of ours who had a studio called Cherokee Studios. And I remember we went there and he was just leaving his session and we got to hear his music. And I really liked it. I was like, hey, man, give me a, a, a tape or something, man. I'll pass it along to the Burton Brothers, man, see if you can get signed. But check this out. This is just a raw out outtakes. This is not cleaned up or anything. I, I still have, like, I love it because I kept all these outtakes and raw footage Check it out. DJ Digital. Good guy, man. He's so quiet. Um, he's a good guy, man. It's always nice every once in a while to talk to Digital because we're on the phone for hours. And, you know, I try to give him any kind of help or anything that he needs as far as asking me questions or anything. But I might not hear, hear from him for years. But here's DJ Digital and uh, the outtakes uh, from him. Lamont Norwood, take one. Okay, state your name. Uh, my name's Lamont Norwood. AKA? Uh, uh, you can start all over, okay. just start all over. 
Uh, state your name. My name is Lamont Norwood, also known as DJ Digital. When, uh, when did you first meet the members of AUX88? The first time I, I met one of the members of AUX88 was back in 1992 at Cherokee Studios. I had, over the phone, I had, I was able to talk to Keith Tucker about his upcoming project that he was recording with uh, Douglas Patterson at, at Cherokee Studios in Detroit. Um, when or how did you first hear about AUX88? I first had a AUX88 cassette of uh, Bass Magnetic. I think it was like 94 or something when, the, when, when it was released. And uh, everybody was talking about it. They was playing it in their cars back then. They had lowrider trucks and stuff. And I was, I was able to buy a copy of it. I think it was Chantonique's Music or one of those uh, local stores in Detroit. Okay. Um, what was um? Let's see, I don't know if you actually. Well, you did actually did hear. Okay. What was your um? What was the first reactions to the AUX eighty eight records? Matter of fact, don't even ask. Let's do this. Uh, um, explain how did, how did you um how did you get involved with Direct B? How did you get a, a deal with Direct B? Well, Keith Tucker had spoke to Lenny Burden about some of my musical interests and, and he told him I was doing pretty good on some of the productions he heard. So they decided to, uh, you know, give me a call or, or let me get, get the number and, and then I called them and then we talked and uh, they set up a meeting and they liked what they heard. So they, you know, a few more meetings, they decided they'd give me a shot and let me record on Direct Me Records. Okay. Um what what other role did you play with Direct Beat once you signed the label? Besides, you know, just talk about, um, you know, you got a deal and then you end up becoming the AUX88, you know, DJ and you had your own thing going. Once, once Lenny and them started to listen. Start over, say uh, the Burden Brothers or something okay. like that. So they don't know who you're talking about. Cool. Once the Burden Brothers started to work with me, we set up a meeting with AUX88 at, at the time and um, they listened to one of my DJ DJ mixtapes and Lawrence had liked it a lot. So he just out of nowhere asked me if I wanted to go to Germany to DJ. And of course I said yes. And uh, that was kind of the beginning of uh, me being a DJ for Aux 88 at that time. Okay. What was the response to the first direct beat records? The AUX 88 records? The, the DJs in Detroit really thought that the, the AUX stuff was the the next uh, movement of electro, and they really they really liked it. It was like that we 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 had enough records to play at the parties again because you know at that time all we had was like the older Metroplex stuff, so it was nice to have a fresh new sound of uh, what they called techno bass at the time, okay. electro techno bass. Okay. Um. Um, how would you describe the AUX88 sound? Your definition of it? I think it's like a, a mixture of um, like Kraftwerk, Cybertron, Dynamix 2, all like rolled up with a different kind of flavor to it. A little LA sound mm -hmm. in there, unknown DJ is, is in there. You know, it's like a mixture of a lot of those, but it's still really unique. Okay, um, what, if anything, has the group AUX88 brought different from any other electro or techno group out of Detroit? Um, I would say their live show is really different. They, they focus on the music being live, really live for real. Um, they, they really try to bring something different with each album you know, different elements from around the world. They have Japanese uh, women in the group now, and they, they've always evolved and changed. Okay. So um, tell me a little bit about, well, tell us a little bit about uh, your role in the live shows when you were uh, part of AUX88. Well, they, they, they let me go out on the road with them as the DJ, and I brought more like a, like a Jazzy Jeff, Fresh Prince type feel to the group. Uh, cutting in live break beats and 
uh, little small DJ sets in the middle of the show where I would get a solo and then that would get them time to reload tracks and get the sequences ready. So it was, it was a real fun time around in the 90s, the okay. mid 90s. Okay, sum up in one word your favorite alias or entity of AUX88 or your favorite song. Like for example, AUX88, Alien FM, Optic Nerve, Positronics, Micronauts, Mad Scientist, Black Tokyo, which out of them is your favorite and which song is your favorite? I think I like the Man or Machine album the most. So that's AUX88. Uh, AUX88 and probably like Man or Machine, I really like that track because it, mm -hmm. it can be sped up, you know, it's, it's got a nice tempo where you can go either way with it if you want to go a little hip hop. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, let me see. Another question is off here. Um, so what what happened? Um, how many uh, releases did you put out for Direct Beat? I had a, a total of six 12 inches and about four or five remixes. Um, and what happened? What? Um, how did you end up like not being on the label anymore? What What happened? How did you know? You Around know? 1999, it, it just seemed like the the electro sales were slowing down. And then everybody just kind of disbanded and went into different directions. So we kind of just gradually grew out into other fields of the music. I started DJing more as, you know, just DJ digital. Okay, how would you describe uh, working with uh, the Burton Brothers as your bosses? What, what was that relationship like? They were real, they were real honest and friendly guys. They, uh, we would get our statements and stuff and, you know, we were, for me at least, it was my first go at the music business, so anything that I earned, I was real grateful for it. Okay, how was your relationship uh, working with Tom? Because you worked with him the longest out of anybody at your 88 He was real, he's a with real Tom? good guy. He, 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 he let me see the world through AUX88, and he, um, he was a real cool guy. I mean, he was, he was easy to work with. Um, he just really wanted people to always be on time for rehearsals. That was the main thing, and that, you know, that's a good a good habit to learn. You did know? you uh, did you guys have fun out on the road? You know, was it a close knit type thing? With you? Yeah, we had we had a lot of fun out on some tours. We did the Marlboro tour in '96, and his wife Arnita managed us, and she kept us kept us on point. You know, no drinking, and you know real good rule, mother type rules, you know, kept us on point on tours. Okay, so um, is there anything else you want to add or any other comments? Um, well, I, you know, I just, you know, look forward to what we can, as uh, producers, bring, you know, to the, to the electro movement these days um, and hope that, look forward to hearing some new AUX88 stuff and, you know, producing some more of my own individual tracks and stuff. Cool. Okay. Yeah, this is the, uh, you know, like I said, it was a great time for me for Christmas time with the pictures. And once again, hey, th um, thanks DJ Digital uh, for, um, I talked to him about a week ago. Um, and, um, you know, I just wanted to just give him um, shouts out, man, because uh, I really like what he did, uh, what we did, the Mechatronic e e EP with me. Um, Anthony Rother and um, but what we did for Mechatronic Records. I really thought his track was the best on the EP. And, um, you know, shouts out, man, and keep doing your thing, man. Peace. Shout outs this week. Once again, everybody, look, I'm looking for my brother. His name is Mark Antonio Tucker. Once again, Mark Antonio Tucker, if you have any um, info or whereabouts of his location or where he's at, please email puzzlebox at puzzleboxrecords.com. Um, he, he's, uh, he's a bit of a loner, man. Everybody's been asking about him. It's been, it's been about 10 years since I saw my brother, and uh, I've got to bring him back into the fray. Um, I'm hoping to get more information, so people, please reach out once again at puzzlebox at puzzle, puzzlebox at puzzleboxrecords.com and uh, help me find my brother. Uh, he would be, my brother would be 57. 
this year. Okay, also, I want to give a special shout out. I got a chance to spend some time, like almost like a, uh, almost two days with uh, um, um, three of my favorite people, man. Uh, my cousins, my cousin, uh, man, they, I love them. They, they're great people. My cousin, Nickel, as we call her, her name is Nicole, but we always call her Nickel. And my cousin, Lynette, we used to call her Lenny, but her name is Lynette. And also my cousin, Robbie. They're all, um, they, these are uh, siblings, they're uh, brother and sister. And also send a special shout out to uh, my cousin Renee. She didn't make that trip, but uh, I got a chance. They, they came and um, stayed the night and stuff. Man, we was up till 4.30 in the morning talking, just chatting about when we were kids and just learning stuff about each other, man. And here's a picture. Once again, shouts out to my cousin, Nicole, Lynette, and cousin Robbie. Love you guys. Also, I want to give a special shout out this week to my wife, Belinda Tucker. Here's a picture of my wife just before, um, like a week before her surgery. She just had rotator cup surgery on her on her shoulder, man. And it's a very serious uh, surgery. She's had to sit in an electric in a chair for moving her arm up and stuff for 12 hours a day for three weeks, man. She's been a trooper, and I'm going to be a trooper and make sure I'm there for her. And I just want to say, hang on in there, babe. You, you done done really good. Love you. And once again, shouts out to my mother and father, who's always been there for me. Love you guys. Shouts out. We'll be calling you today. And on that note, I know what I've done, and I know what I will be doing. See you on the next K1 Agenda. That will be episode 85. Once again, people, wear your mask. This stuff is not over. Thank you. And I just want to say, everyone, please hit that subscribe button for YouTube. Please subscribe to my page. Um, I really have enjoyed all the support I've been getting, but hey, like this and subscribe to this page. Keep Tucker K1. Hit the subscribe button. Thank you.